Syncing your files via P2P with BitTorrent Sync. This segment is brought to you by Full Sail University. You guys know I love my file sharing services, especially when it has to do with anything up in the cloud. And today I got a new one for you. This one is called BitTorrent Sync. So BitTorrent Labs recently released a file sharing application called BitTorrent Sync. It's basically a competitor to Dropbox, OwnCloud, and SparkleShare as well, which I've checked out pretty much all of those in the past. It is closed source though, so that's a really, really major con of this. Now, it was designed with security and encryption in mind. Files are transferred using AES-128 encryption. The session keys are generated using perfect forward secrecy. And the keys, which I'll get to in a moment, are randomly created using Dev Random for Mac and Linux and Crypto API for Windows. And of course, files are transferred securely, but security must also be in effect on each of your machines as well, because the files won't be saved in there. They'll be saved in their unencrypted state, basically. Now, it does work similar to Dropbox in that it syncs one folder from one computer over to the next pretty much seamlessly, and it can also be used via mobile as well, which is a definite perk. Syncing is really fast, it's really efficient, and relatively easy to set up as well. Now, BitTorrent Sync runs on peer-to-peer -peer protocol, the same protocol used by uTorrent and BitTorrent, and it lets you transfer really large files really, really fast. Now, there's no central company server. All those files are just directly synced between one PC and another. There's nothing going up there, up, a, up in the cl cloud, for example. And it's cross-platform. You can use it on Windows, you can use it on Linux, on Mac, Android, iOS, I checked it out on all of those, and each one was a little bit different, but each one has its perks. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo of Windows, Linux, and I'm also going to mention a little bit about using it on my phone as well to give you an idea of what you can expect if you want to check out BitTorrent Sync yourself. So let's go ahead and start with my Windows box. Okay, so I have BitTorrent Sync pulled up over here. It's a very easy download. It's obviously a very nice GUI. It's very simple to use. Basically, what I did is create a new file over here that I wanted to sync called BitTorrent Sync. I also created one called BitTorrent Sync Linux so that I could make sure that my Linux box was syncing correctly to my, Mac, my Windows box as well. So if I open up this folder, BitTorrent Sync, I have this picture in here of me and my friend Dale we're singing, having a good time. So I just wanted to make sure that this would actually transfer over to other devices when I set up syncing on my Linux box. So I have that file all ready to go. And then I went over here and decided to create a new folder. So you can add a sync folder or you can remove down here, very easy. If you wanna add a folder, first thing you do is generate your secret code. So this secret code is what you can share with your friends or family or just with your other machine, for example if you want to you know, share that file amongst other people other than yourself. So I generated a code, and then folder to sync, I browsed and I chose the folder on my desktop. And it'll probably tell me that it's already syncing. Select folder, and then I hit OK. Yeah, folder's already been added. So once that folder is added over here, I can go ahead and go to my other device and share with that secret key on that device with my Windows box, if that makes sense. And then hopefully I'll be able to get into my files on Linux as well. Now on my Linux box, I also decided to create a BitTorrent sync backup on there as well. I put a picture in there and I was hoping that I could sync it to my Windows box. That is BT Sync Linux. So under here, I decided to sync this with my Linux box. I never downloaded this on my Windows machine, but there's a picture of me trying to steal ice cream from my brother during his Air Force basic training. That was good times. I really liked that day. It was quite funny. So it obviously downloaded just fine on this machine. The GUI is really easy to use. You can also see which devices are syncing. So Snubs Aspire, that's my Linux box. It shows you transfers if anything's happening, the history of file changes, so everything that's gone on today. And you can also change your preferences, so you can have it start up when Windows starts, blah de blah de blah So I'll go ahead and cancel out of here and move on to my Linux machine. So this one gets a little bit interesting in that it actually runs in the background and runs on the web. So you have a web UI instead of a, a GUI, a front end like you do on Windows. So in the background here, I've went ahead and started up uh, BT Sync, which I downloaded onto my desktop. 
And then over here on my local host, which is on my local machine, in this very easy UI, I just went to my uh, port 8888, clicked enter, and hopefully it should connect automatically to Bit BitTorrent Sync, which is running in the background. So on here, you can see that I have a couple of devices already connected. So these are two folders that I'm sharing from my Windows dev device back to Linux. Now, if I wanted to add a new one, I could just go up here and click Add Folder. So it looks a little bit different. So it still asks you for a secret that you will generate. So I just generated one. And then it asks you for a path. And this path can be, you know, whichever folder that you want it to be. So if I want it to be my home folder, I'll click on that and click Add. Aha! Folder is already syncing. So that's because I have a folder from my desktop already syncing onto this application. Once you have that set up, it'll show up down here and it'll start syncing with whatever machines you have shared that secret code with. So since I've already shared it with my Windows box, it's going to try to sync whatever images I have available onto my Linux machine. So if I open up my Windows sync, I should be able to see there's that picture of me and Dale hanging out and having a good time singing together. So cute. So it works. Now I also wanted to mention, yes, you can use this on mobile as well. You can send files from Android to iOS or vice versa with a QR code in the app. And you can also download a backup of your phone onto your computer and you can view your files from your computer onto your phone. So I downloaded this on my iPhone. It's a really simple app to use. It's very, very easy and customizable. If I open it on here, I can not only see the files that are shared from my Linux machine right now because I generated a QR code on my Linux machine to pick it up on my phone. There's also one last thing I wanted to mention which is sending files back and forth. So that's basically sharing mobile to mobile. So earlier Darren had his Android phone available. He downloaded the BitTorrent Sync app which you must have on each phone to be able to share files back and forth. You click on send files or receive files. If you choose to receive files, You'll take a picture of a QR code. It'll bring up BitTorrent Sync on your phone on the application. And then you should be able to see whatever images or downloads that you want to be able to view. So I was able to view a cute little picture of me and my little brother. It works fine. It's very fluid. But again, this is a closed source application. Now I do want to check out one more. It's called C file. A lot of people emailed me about that one. I haven't checked it out quite yet, but I'm thinking I might do that one next week or the week after that. So let me know what you think and what your concerns are about C file as well as BitTorrent Sync. Other than it being closed source, are there any other concerns that you might have? And coming up soon, we'll check out what's new in the hack shop. But first, a quick break. Let me take a quick moment to tell you guys about Full Sail University's online mobile bachelor degree program. It can teach you the skills you need to take advantage of this emerging opportunity. And in the degree, you're going to learn both the programming and business sides of mobile development. Everything from concept, development, deployment, marketing, and app from beginning to end. Explore advanced programming languages, visual frameworks, usability principles, and app development for both iOS and Android operating systems. Throughout Full Sail's project LaunchBox program, students receive a MacBook Pro preloaded with industry software plus iOS and Android devices. Courses are delivered through Full Sail's immersive online education platform. It maximizes the capabilities of the Mac, giving you a learning experience unlike any other. Between the App Store and Google's Play Store, over 50 billion apps have been downloaded with no signs of slowing down. So if you're ready to master the technology and software to compete in this rapidly growing industry, Visit fullsale.edu slash hack5 to learn more. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5, but before we get going, you are... You are... Creepily me, staring creepily into the camera? <laughs> no, we have a new product in the hack shop. And it smells good. <laughs> it's got that new gadget smell. Mm, new gadget smell. Yeah, this is the Motorola... Atrix lap dock. Yes, which goes well <laughs> with these. Yeah, so if you didn't see my segment last week, it was really, really fun, and I basically took Raspberry Pi and turned it into a Raspberry lap top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Raspberry Pi lap top.
top. These cables are ridiculous. <laughs> I just love this. It looks like a You can do the same thing with like an MK802 or any of those little yes, Android you can. PCs or like so, I don't know, your phone. We have a limited MHL. supply of these available. Yeah, just a couple, yeah so. we just have a few. Uh, but we stuck them up there for you guys if you have a Raspberry Pi at home and if you want to have some fun with this. We also have the cable in the store so that you can connect them with no problems. Not have to hack one together yourself if you're not feeling like it. So, as always, thank you so much because yeah. we really appreciate totally all the support that you guys give us. Totally directly supports Hack5. Thank yes, you. Yes, it does. So that's hakshop.com. Com, right? Dot com. Yes. <laughs> We're also going to be at DerbyCon, so I want to uh, let you guys know if you are in Louisville, Kentucky, come on out. We will be there as well as uh, at the San Diego TorCon coming up. So hack5.org for the dates and all you of that stuff. You are going to DerbyCon, right? Yes. Going right. to DerbyCon yes. uh, and, and uh, TorCon. Should be good. So exciting. Um, of course, we value your feedback. So feedback at hack5.org is the place to let us know what's on your mind, what you'd like us to see oh, yeah. us cover. Stuff like that. And hack5.org slash follow to find out what we are doing every single day, including those conventions. Here we go. So with all of that said, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technologist. Bye. Bye. Darren got out on the kitchen. So last guy, last, last guys. Blah, 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 blah. PGP implementation using air, got, air gaps. Get out of the kitchen. Get out of the kitchen. Get out of the kitchen. Air. It's not just for air guns. Oh man. It's the token ring. Puff puff pack it. Breaking the rotation. We have a gun rack. We need Paul, where's our Hack 5 gun rack? Out of the kitchen. Out of the kitchen. Oh man, stop bogarting the packets. All right, so absolutely obnoxious? Yes. Totally cool? All right. Oh, yeah, bleh, bleh, bleh. Try again. All right. It's like token ring, man. You had to be there. And if you weren't, man, none of us were there. Look at the cute little 